Hey everybody, in this video I want to talk a little bit about biofiltration. Uh, I've shot a few videos recently where I've talked about stocking density and overstocking your tank and I've mentioned about my Garami tank here, um, how I would consider it to be very heavily stocked and not overstocked. But I've mentioned that the biofiltration is important. Now this is a 55 gallon tank and I have the uh, pretty much standard canister filter that everybody has, the Sun Sun 304B. And that is rated up for a 150 gallon tank, I believe. If not, it's a 125 gallon tank. I think it's rated for a 150. What that rating means and what bio load means in your tank is that you have to have a certain amount of uh, nitrifying bacteria to be able to handle the amount of bio load that you've got in the tank. Now, I want to make clear what I mean when I say that. I've got various tanks around the room. I uh, pointed out this one is a 40 gallon tank and it has the Tetra Whisper filter on the back that is rated for a 70 gallon tank. The reason it's rated for a 70 gallon tank is two things. One is the amount of surface area that is provided by the biomedia and two is the amount of water flow that crosses over that biomedia. This is a 20 long and I have a filter on it that is designed for a 40 gallon tank. Now this one is a different type of filter and it actually uses the very effective ceramic rings and I actually doubled the amount of ceramic rings that came with it and in the little chamber over here where the water enters in I've actually put some additional bio balls. So this biofiltration in this tank is probably equipped to handle uh, a 50 gallon tank. The problem would be in this case is that I wouldn't get enough water flow over the amount of surface area that's in the tank. So what I wanted to show you is a little visual demonstration of what I mean when I talk about the surface area. Now your standard large size filter that goes in your Tetra Whisper uh, canister and that's everything from the 20 gallon filters all the way up to the 70 and the 70 actually has two of these side by side. But this is what they mean when they're talking about your bio media, and it's just a little very, very loose sponge. You can see right through it. Uh, all that is there to do is to provide surface area. If you give me half a second here, I will try to get the sponge itself out. And you can see it's just a sponge that sits down inside this little plastic housing. That is designed for water to flow through it. That's why it has these little feet on the front, those little round bumps. They hold it away from the wall so that there's a space for water to flow through this sponge. And that provides real estate for your nitrifying bacteria to live. So when I talk about overstocking a tank, and I use the example of an 8-inch Pleco in a 10-gallon tank, now, not taking anything else into consideration, just thinking about the amount of biomass that would be in that tank, you would need a certain amount of surface area to allow for the amount of nitrifying bacteria required to deal with that amount of bio load. So if we look at a 10 gallon filter, this little joke of a thing is the sponge, very, very thin, very small, but it is designed to house enough nitrifying bacteria to deal with the standard amount of bio load you would expect to find in a 10 gallon tank. So if you were going to be cruel and keep a large fish in a small tank and you didn't care that the fish didn't have room to move around but you wanted to ensure that the tank was capable of handling the amount of ammonia that was going to be produced you'd need to provide a tremendous amount of surface area for the amount of water that was in that tank and you'd have to flow that water over the surface area many many times over per hour you'd have to take the volume of that tank 10 gallons and you'd have to move that 10 gallons of water over that biosurface uh, at, at least 10 times per hour uh, for a bio load that massive so you move up into the more specialized filters and this comes from a filter that I don't particularly care for but it is a um, I can't even think of what it's called now. It's Tetra, and it's the Whisper EX. That's what it is. It's not the standard Whisper. Um, but this is what they give you for 
your biomedia, and they claim that all these little fingers give you more surface area than that bio sponge does. I don't know about that. I don't know how to do the math to find out what the surface area would actually be on this, but these are little hard plastic fingers, and they're fairly deep. Um, and then these are much more soft and flexible. I don't know why I'm not focusing here. Sorry about that. Um, the one thing I will say about this is it's very free flowing and because of the nature of these things it tends not to get gummed up and that's an issue you will get. When you use these kinds of filters, these sponges, these will get all gummed up and pretty soon the water is flowing in front of this rather than through it and you're actually losing water contact with the surface area when it gets gummed up like that so occasionally you do need to get in there and gently swab them out rinse them out a little bit uh, if you have tap water that has chlorine in it if you're using like municipal city water uh, rinse it in your uh, aquarium water when you do a water change use your wastewater to rinse that out even just a quick dip in tap water that has even little tiny amounts of chlorine or chloramine will kill that nitrifying bacteria and you will actually wipe out your bio sponge not even realizing it and put it back in your tank only to have a disaster um, so always be really really careful about that bacteria I say this over and over again that bacteria is an inhabitant of your tank you have to think about it as an inhabitant of your tank and in the same way you wouldn't take your fish out of your tank and temporarily put them in chlorinated tap water while you're doing a water change you wouldn't do that to your nitrifying bacteria either or at least I should say you shouldn't do that to your nitrifying bacteria so just keep all of that in mind when you're thinking about stocking a tank and stocking density. Again, it's this amount of surface area. If you take a small 10 gallon tank and you hang, uh, in this case, this is a 20 gallon long as well. And this has the standard whisper filter on it and it is designed for a 20. Now, the 20 gallon takes the same as the 40 gallon and then when you move up to the 70 the 70 actually requires two of these so again what is the difference between the 20 and the 40 if this is the same size and same thickness the difference is the amount of water that moves across that surface uh, I don't have a huge bio load in this tank and I also have a lot of other stuff in this tank that actually uh, gives me surface area this is my brackish tank you can see my figure 8 puffer right there um, the amount of surface area I have in this tank, and that includes the plants, the rocks, the gravel, everything in there, uh, even the glass, is surface area, and nitrifying bacteria lives on that. Uh, do not have a huge bio load in this tank, a couple of shrimp, that puffer, a few little gobies, and then you can see the live bearers right there, and that's the grand totality of bio load here. So the 20 gallon filter plus all of the decor I have in there is more than enough um, biofiltration for this tank. If I was going to make it any heavily or stocked, I would at least move up to a 30 or probably just go right to the 40 gallon uh, size filter, which again will have the same sponge in it. It will simply have more water flow, so it will bring more water in contact with that nitrifying bacteria uh, per hour than this little 20 gallon filter will. And these actually have a um, knob on them. You can adjust the water flow so I have mine turned down fairly low because I don't like a really uh, fast current in this tank. These aren't the kind of fish that necessarily need or want a lot of current, especially the puffer. And as far as I'm concerned, this is his tank and everybody else just kind of lives in there with him. So I keep the tank set up more for him than anybody else. Uh, and because of that, I keep the current fairly low and subdued so he can uh, cruise around the tank and enjoy himself. So that's just my little piece on... Uh, My biofiltration, that was a little look at Squeaker coming down to say hello. Getting my clean clothes all furry. So thanks for watching this one. Go ahead and subscribe if you're not already. I do these off-the-cuff type videos uh, on a regular basis. Uh, something pops in my head. I feel it's worth sharing, so I go ahead and throw a video out there. So that was my little brief discussion on uh, biofiltration. I hope that cleared up some answers. Uh, I guess we can have one last look here at my 125 before we call this the end of the video. So as always, I'd like you to uh, please comment. Uh, I intend these videos more or less to get a conversation started as opposed to be like the final word or my definitive say on the issue. So please feel free to comment. 
Uh, please share this video with all your friends. Uh, of course, please like it. And I will see you real soon. Thanks again for watching this one. Hope you enjoyed.